Hi. <laughs> Surprise. It's me, Twisted Paper Studio. Hi. I'm Donna Twist of Twisted Paper Studio. And I wanted to formally introduce myself and allow you to see me. It's me. Behind the hands that do all those crazy kooky things. Um, I wanted to surprise you guys and let you know that I think I'm going to do the 100 day challenge. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. I hope I can keep up. I'm hoping you guys will cheer me on and root for me and talk to me and leave me messages and tell me where you're from. And I'm hoping most that I inspire you. So if you're new to junk journaling or if you're new to paper crafting and you enjoy the paper craft, um, Follow me, subscribe, hit the little bell, let you know when I post videos. Of course, I'll be posting them for the next 100 days, I promise. Um, so yes, we're in this challenge together. Um, this is my first 100 day project and um, I hope I can, I hope I can, um, you know, bring to you what you guys need, what you look for all the time on YouTube, inspiration. So I hope I can do that for you. And yes, I'm wearing my my Luya merch. This is my son. I never not wear merch. Normally, five days out of the week, I'm in my son's merch. And I have a necklace. It says Luya. Uh, a fan, a lovely fan had gifted that to me when um, in one of my first uh, trips out to LA to see my son perform. And then this is my, this is my, children's uh, record label, Loud Era Records. So I'm excited. Okay, so if you're new to my channel, my son is Luya, L-O-U-Y-A-H, and I am Twisted Paper Studio, his mama, Luya's mom. I also have three sons. Um, the My oldest son is Luya's manager, and my youngest son is his um, lighting and DJ. So they all are in the musical part of this all together. Uh, I'm going to go over today's basics. Um, if you're new to scrapbooking or junk journaling um, and you're coming from another craft, think of bringing those things into the craft with you. Um, think outside the box for a minute and just take a look around at what you have in your home and I will do my best to answer questions. So if you have questions for me on a video or a question about a tool or a question, a question about how to do something differently, um, feel free to ask me. I'm, I'm very, very willing to answer as what I can. But the most, the most thing that I could tell you or the, the most important thing I can tell you is to have fun and that there are no rules. So let's get this started huh we'll get today started i just wanted to surprise you with that i had told you a few videos back that i had a surprise for you but nobody asked so <laughs> i kept it hidden um and uh we'll just start crafting today okay so give me a minute and i'm going to turn the camera around and we'll get going okay i'm back turned around and ready to go um i would like to wish beautiful blessings because i did not do that in the beginning so um, I would love to wish, uh, beautiful blessings to, uh, let's see. Oh, I just got a new comment. So we'll go with Karen S55555. Uh, she's from Texas. Oh, blessings to you, Karen. And yes, I, I'm thumbing through your video, uh, your comment. Uh, we will get to that farm journal, Karen. We will, we will. Beautiful blessings to Steph B200. You are my cheerleader. Um, you are my crafting buddy. You've been here for a long time. And I just, I adore the heck out of you. Uh, Steph B um, is also on Instagram. And she has a, a cute little bird, um, Dakota. That Dakota? Or Dicta. Dicta? Oh, I can't remember the bird's name. But it's just so cute. It's a parakeet and it talks. It's adorable. And um, Steph, you're the greatest. Brenda Hall. Brenda, you're a longtime follower. Blessings to you. Um, Brenda was one of my um, winners to my, um, I want to say, was was it my 1,000 or my 2,000? I don't remember, but uh, she won a journal from me, and um, we've been uh, crafting buddies ever since. Uh, she sent me the um, the message in reference to the tool, um, the uh, crocodile tool, 
which by the way, if anyone needs it and you follow me on Instagram, it's very easy for me to just forward the message I did last night to Joanne. And then also, gosh, beautiful blessings to Joanne, uh, Joanne's Collective Co. She's a doll. Um, uh, beautiful blessings to uh, Mary A. Um, beautiful blessings to um, Maggie Kiakaha, Maggie. Um, uh, beautiful blessings to, oh my gosh, you guys. You, beautiful blessings to Leslie over at 507 Willow House Journals. Beautiful blessings to you, Leslie. You are my girlfriend. Um, beautiful blessings to Salon Barbette. Cheryl Talifus and Lindsay, beautiful blessings to you. Kathy Spaulding, BJ Young, Dolores Hogan. Dolores is new to my channel. Beautiful blessings to Carolyn Brooke. She's all the way from England. Beautiful blessings to Anita Jansen. Um, Denise S. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm, I'm looking. Oh, beautiful blessings to Tamara, my girl Tamara. Uh, beautiful blessings to Miss Debbie, uh, uh, Mrs. Debbie, 3705. Celeste, beautiful blessings to you, Woodland Inspired. Uh, beautiful blessings to Lee Goddess, 19, 1692. She's my crafting buddy. She follows me everywhere. Um, beautiful blessings to Hill Dill. I want to say, I, I think Hill Dill, is that Holly? I think it's you, Holly. Beautiful blessings to you. or And if it's not, beautiful blessings to Hill Dill also. But I, I want to say that it's Holly. Um, uh, beautiful blessings to uh, Christina's Creation 6-9. Um, present Rain. Um, uh, Charlotte Peterson 3417. Beautiful blessings to Linda Sanchez. Judy McJa McJacobson. Um, beautiful blessings to Angela Barker. I don't know. I'm keep going back. Darla Love. Um, Betty, Betty Metz, just beautiful blessings to you guys. Thank you so much for your comments all the time. You're just, you're just the greatest. I, and yours. Oh, and beautiful blessings to junk journaling, Jen, beautiful blessings to you, Jen and Kathy Lakin. If I forgot anybody, please forgive me. Beautiful blessings to you. I'm just getting to know you. These are the names that I know on a constant daily. Um, they comment and they they leave me, um, you know, uh, praise, not that I need it, but they often do. And I'm so grateful to it. Um, I just, it's, it's fun to hear and it keeps you going and it's, it's in the cheering section, you know, it's a cheer. It's, I, I just, I adore it. And then also, so I did want to say when the camera was turned on me, if there is something that you guys would like for me to craft, if there's something that you want me to use in the craft and maybe it's just my in my style that you'd like to see it how you in something that you like a theme let me know and i will most certainly craft it if it's cats if it's if it's the, the farmhouse of course we did that if it's little pigs if it's cows if it's i'll definitely craft something in that and give you some ideas and some different ways of course in my style okay so this is going to be kind of like a junk journal 101 craft basics. That's how I'm going to start my 100 day craft project for paper crafting. I'm choosing paper crafting. So that's what I work with and I'm going to mix in fabric with it. I always use Fabri-Tac. I did not always use Fabri-Tac. I use it now because it is a, it is not a wet glue. It's kind of like a dry glue. It kind of it kind of dries very very quickly and it doesn't wrinkle the paper. I see that this glue does the same. This is art glitter glue. It dries clear. Um some of the glues that you might have that problem with is more like that I a leans glue. I like that glue. I have a huge bucket. <laughs> huge huge bucket because I thought that's what I, I thought that that is what paper crafters used however when I use it it wrinkles my paper so that's more kind of like um a crafting glue not a paper crafting glue that's the Aileen's craft glue and um when I use a glue stick I go for the print glue stick I like it it's my preference however there are many glue sticks on the market that I hear from other crafters that they like. <coughs> um, they There's a lot of different crafters that use all different kinds of craft glue, from the kids' craft glue to the, to the you know, right below the print craft, 
prick glue stick. This glue stick is from Germany. This is a Germany, German brand. And I just, I choose it. It's my go-to glue stick. And I use these, these uh, containers. They are called um, Bell, Sugar Bell, Sugar Bell containers. You can find them in Michael's and probably even in Hobby Lobby, but I'm really not sure. You can also find them online, Sugar Bell. They are for icing for a, um, they're for icing for uh, cakes and things like that. And I just like them because I have a lot of problems in my hands. I, I have a broken wrist where I had like, it completely shattered and fractured my entire wrist. I have all plates in here. And to squeeze sometimes cramps my fingers, and this doesn't give me any problem when I squeeze. So if you have any problems with arthritis or things like that in your hand, uh, I love this bottle. I suggest it. Okay, now, some of the things about junk journaling. What do we use to make a journal? You see lots of different things that people use. Um, I'll pull some out. People use books, old books, hardcover books. We'll go over that in the 100 day challenge on how to insert a signature into a hardcover book because there are two ways you can do that, okay? And then, let me just grab here. People use garbage. This is garbage, but you can use this to make a book cover. And people use um, file folders. Well, I thought I had a file folder in front of me. People use file folder covers. You can use file folder covers to make a to make a um, to make a book out of. You can do a long, tall, skinny book. You can do a short, chunky book. You can do a big, hardcover book. You can do whatever you can do whatever kind of book you want. It doesn't have to be a precise me measurement either. Um, I see that there are guidelines to follow for precise me measurements as far as like a travel journal or a standard journal. But there's, there's really no rules. Remember that there's no rules, none, none, no rules. Okay. So let's talk about paper. Now paper. I do have a video that I will link below. Let me write this down now here so I don't forget to to do that at the end of this video. So link video. Okay, paper. You can use lots of different paper. You can buy digitals. You can use book pages from a book that you took apart. You can use junk mail. You can use um, plain, and, and if you're just starting out, you have copy paper at home. You can, if you have a digital, of course, you can print on copy paper. You can dye copy paper. You can dye copy paper with, uh, copy paper. That's what I said, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's another thing about me. My words get twisted sometimes. Um, you can dye coffee. You can dye copy paper with coffee, with tea, with ink. If you have, uh, little ink bottles, the little ink bottles that you get, the refiller bottles. I don't know if I have any in front of me. I mean, your your hands are going to get, you know, if you're using ink, of course, please remember to use your, to use rubber gloves. I don't have any in front of me, but you can do whatever you want. If you have ink here and you want to work with this paper and it's in your book like this, and you just want some color on it to get started to, to do your crafting. This is probably going to be really, really dark. You could just go like this right on it. Just like this. And then you could, you could write on here, but it's red. It's for the occasion. I could make this a Christmas page right now without it having anything except for the ink. <coughs> you can write on it. You can take some, you know, little pieces of paper and, and collage on it. Um, you can, so again, back to going with this copy paper. If you have nothing else and you have a box <laughs> and you have some copy paper, cause you do need paper. 
you can dye this with, um, if you have old tablets from Easter eggs, you can use those tablets to dye the paper. You can use a can of beet juice. A can of beet juice, yes, ladies and gentlemen. It makes a red dye. You can use some black beans. It makes a blue dye. The water. You can boil an avocado in a pit. Uh, the avocado skin in a pit. It makes pink paper. Like a like a variable pink, pink paper. Um, you can use... Let me see. Hold on. Turmeric. Uh, Turmeric seasoning. It makes your papers yellow. You can use a red cabbage. It makes your papers blue. So you can just use copy paper and use some things that you eat with food in your kitchen to dye your papers with to not have to, to, to make a beautiful journal. I don't know that I have any of those things in front of me because of the fact that I have run out. I've run out of it all. So here is a here is a coffee dyed paper, right? And I put a muffin pan. I put it on top of the muffin pan in the oven while it was drying and it made those prints. Here's one that I had which was a Christmas lace um, placemat for Christmas time. It was this huge red poinsettia and I just put it over the paper and let it dry. You can let this dry in the oven. You can Google how to, um, of course I don't have an oven here, so I'm not, I'm not going to be teaching how to coffee dye the papers. I will do some tricks on coffee dyeing the papers during the hundred day project, but I won't be doing it at the oven per se. Um, so I do, I won't, I won't show you that. I can't show you that. I'm not in my kitchen. Um, but you can, uh, do your coffee dyeing in the oven or you don't have to, you can let it dry out in the sun naturally. If you live in a warm area, you can do that. Um, this has some lace tablecloth pieces on there, just sitting on there from the sun. It was drying in the sun, but there's many things you can do to color your paper to have paper for your junk journal. You can also use household paper, household paper. If you have some graph paper, if you have some, you know, go and look in your office supply stuff. That's a fun place to look to find stuff for, for crafting uh, paper crafts. And also, you know, if you have children, which I do have, children of course but when they were younger they used to come home with all kinds of of paper from school use their papers make a book about about their about their uh school their grade what they did oh you'll see it all on the, the, they'll have a whole year of papers you could do it from kindergarten through 12th grade and they'll have a whole bunch of um things and memories to look back on and you could also if, if it's not something that you'd want to keep and they don't want to keep it you could use it in your junk journal it's paper when you get some junk mail and you have that piece of paper in the mail in there that you'd go to throw away, uh, why not use it? You can cover it up. It's no big deal. Coffee dye it. Um, ink it up. Cover it with a decoupage of something. Of a, of a um, you know, a, what do you call it? A, uh, nah, a digital. <laughs> okay. So there, we, that's the paper. That's what I would suggest if you if you're new to junk journaling, if you're new. And then some helpful hints I have for you. So let's see. If I personally am going to go out shopping for anything, for anything. I could go to be, I could be going to Walmart. I could go to Staples. I could go to the supermarket. I could go to the dollar store. I could go anywhere. The first place I go to to check is to see if they have any neat paper that I don't have. That's what I do. So if you do that, and also, I also look for sales. That's the first thing I do in Staples. I go to the back where the sales wall is, and I go to look to see if there are any papers on sales that I could use in my work. Because 
I don't buy it at full price. I can't. I cannot afford it. I'm not doing, you know, I'm not doing the numbers that I wish I was doing <laughs> in, in sales, but I, I just can't afford it. And I'm sure the rest of you are riding the same boat with me. So I go to the back and look for the sales and then I get it if I need it. Um, if I don't need it and it's a special kind of paper and I know it's really expensive and it's really cheap on sale, I buy it for a later date. All right, and then also, you know, your, your your mail. There's plenty in your mail to use for paper. Um, so here, I had this the other day. Where'd it go? Hold on, I have it on the floor. Okay. So when you're when you're gathering up your supplies, when you're gathering them up, you're start you're going to start to accumulate things and have them, you know, in your stash. You're gonna have them. Pay, um, envelopes and cardboard pieces um, with mailers and flyers and uh, odds and ends of cereal boxes that you've cut up that you've used before. Paper bags. Um, here, this was on something this was on Christmas paper, but look, it is, it is, uh, like a, it has a cardboard base and it's a bit sturdy, but these are good for tags, <coughs> belly bands, um, journal cards, pockets. These are good for page flips in your book. What else? What else do I have here? Um, you could just start thinking um, about the things you have around the house. You don't necessarily have to go out. If you've chosen this as a hobby, your new hobby that you just absolutely can't get enough of, because believe me you, when I first started um, years and years and years ago, I couldn't get enough either. Honestly, I was so addicted and, and, and I could just imagine how you are just so addicted and so ready to go and all these thoughts and just everything running from everywhere. It's just, it's like a, it's like a locomotive. You just chug, 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 chug along. And every time you look at something, you you think of something else. So think outside the box, look around your house, see what you have. You could start with these items for sure. And we are going to, um, let me just take a look at my Okay, we are going to start with some of these items today and do some things on them, of course. Um, I'm just kind of going over some of the basics. So now, when you make a journal, all right, the things inside of a journal, let me just get a journal. Hold on. I'm going to show you about journals when you make them. Okay, let me put this on the floor. Now, when you make a journal, they could be big, they could be small, they could be tall, they could be, they could be, um, here, let's get some more. I'm going to get some more, hold on. They could be small. They could be, they could be hard, they could be hard covers. They could be soft covers. They could be, this is, I believe this is a file folder. They could be thin. Um, they could be, whoops, a little thicker here. Hold on. Here, this one's a small one. And you can use lots of different papers, digitals, book pages. You can use whatever you want in there. Let me put these aside. Now, these are called inside, inside the book. These are called signatures. There are three signatures in here, as you can see, that were sewn. There are three. See? One, two, three. Those are your signatures inside your book. You can do one signature that's big, or you can break it up and do 
as many as you want. Your signatures can be as many pages as you want. Normally, they are around 10. But if you had, if you wanted to do a book with one signature, you can put as many papers as your little heart desires and as the book will fit in to close. Just remember that I, this has three signatures. Just remember that the more you want to fill it up with items, the more it's going to have the alligator effect to it, which means that it will, it will have this, um, open effect. You can, you could shove it closed with your hand, but it's not going to stay that way. So the, I have a tendency to be heavy in filling up books with lots of different things. So that's my, that's my fault, my, my, my fall through. <laughs> um, this one doesn't have an alligator mouth so much. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of good, but I made the spine, I made the spine larger. So the larger you make your spine, the less you'll have of an alligator mouth on your book. So those are signatures inside the book. Now, these are um, not hidden signatures. This is a three signature. Um, it's a three signature hole, uh, pine, hole a, three, a three hole signature. <laughs> and then this is a hidden spine signature. So this is where the signature is um, hidden on the inside and it's covered with a piece of fabric. And we'll, we will go over that in this 100 day um, pro craft project, I, I promise you. I am going to um, go over some different ways to put in signatures and we'll make some books and we'll make some stuff to put inside. Everything that I showed you from this, hold on, let me pull it back out. Everything that I showed you from this junk pile here, you can make to put in these books. You can make your tall, skinny tags. This, you can make this out of that, uh, this piece here. You just collage on it. And I will also show you some collage basics too. Um, you could make, you could make, um, your, your tags from digitals. You can make journaling cards. You can make, you can make your pullout. I don't know if I have a, oh yeah, right here. So this is a flip from an envelope. The, those envelopes here just made a flip out of it from an, from junk envelope from, it's all from your, it's all from the stuff that you have around your house. You don't have to go out and buy anything special. However, I do suggest, which I absolutely love because you can make so many different things with it is digitals. There are many artists with lots of different digitals. They're not very expensive and you can print them out as many times as you want. Some of my favorite artists are Ruby and Pearl and, oh, and myself. I have, I have digitals too. <laughs> um, but some of my favorite artists have um, some beautiful kits in their shop and it's Ruby and Pearl, Rachel from Roxy Creations. And I use a lot of labels in my work and most of them are from Love Junk Journals at Tracy Fox and Rachel over at uh, uh, Roxy Creations. Uh, so let's see. So that's a that's a journal. Those are different types of journals. There, I have the um, Shabbatov. They oh, they can even be small. Your journals, they can even be tiny. They don't have to be big. They could be little ones. You can make it whatever size you want out of anything that you have. All it is, is a book. It's a book that you're putting together, no matter the signatures, no matter how many signatures, no matter if they're hidden signatures or open signatures, or they're in a file folder with a, with a bow on the outside of it. It's a journal, it's a book, it's what you're putting together. Okay, so let me put these things on the side here and we'll, we'll move along. We'll move along. Now, as far as the cover, oh, I wanted to go over that too. Do I have one here? I'm trying to look. Okay, so this cover is a combination of fabric and paper. It's both. This is paper. This is fabric. I sew. 
this is paper, this is, uh, this is fabric, this is paper. I sew, I personally sew on all my journals, I, I sew them. So if you have a sewing machine, you can use that. If you do not have a sewing machine, the only suggestion that I have for you, the best suggestion that I have for you is to make sure that you really glue well all around the edges and all around the edges of your pieces for it to stay down for your cover if you're planning on using fabric and paper on your cover as a collage um, because there's many ways that you can collage the front of a low well, here I did not sew on this I did not sew on this I glued this down I did sew this but I didn't sew it on the I didn't sew it on the book I just sewed it first and then I glued it down. So this is glued down onto the um, old journal. That's not, that's not sewn. And you can do that same thing on any kind of a cover that you have, a book cover that you have. You can do the same thing. And you can also do it, you could also do this um, with, with um, file folders and things like that with your with your other books. So let's let's do one. Let's do let's do a book. Let me see how much time I have. Oh, it's going fast. <laughs> Our 100 day project is going fast. So this is like 101 today, you guys. 101. Let me um hold on. Let me pause the camera a moment so I could get the stuff ready so that we can do this if you have this if you have garbage here in front of me and you want to get started today let me pause the camera and i'll be right back and we'll we'll do we'll do a cover today hold on okay i'm back thank you for waiting for me so i'm gonna get out my big cutter oh and that's another thing i have a big cutter um if you're just starting out um i i and you I work with scrapbooking paper a lot. So that's the reason why I have this cutter. 12 by 12 paper is pretty big. If you're just starting out or you don't work with scrapbooking paper, you can, this cutter, it, I, I would suggest this cutter. This is a Fisker's cutter. It's affordable. You can get it on Amazon. And it's a little, it's, it's, it's not as long, but you can, you can work with it and get by using it. Um, with the things that you have, especially if you get digitals and you cut them. This size right here is about what size your books are. So it's it's tall enough that it's not gonna be too small to work with. I wouldn't say, I mean, I, this is a little bit smaller. This is something for me to just size up small things that I'm using on the book. But you definitely need, if you're not using a ruler and a craft knife, you definitely need, um, you know, to invest in a, a good cutter if you're going to be using this and working with it all the time. And these, I believe I got them at Staples. Okay, so I'm just going to start by opening this box at where the, there's a fold in the box and most boxes are the same. There's a fold on the side and then there's a fold on the bottom. So this is how I do this. I get all these things open go ahead and show you okay so now I have everything open here in order to make my book even I fold this over the spine into the other part you know I lay it on the on the back part and then I start by trimming off all these pieces and I'm not going to really have any choice unless I make it smaller as to what this book is going to be as the size once I take off all the end pieces that's I mean this is the size the book is going to be it's what the size of the box was you could do lots of things by extending it and all that stuff but um I'm just going to do this size here okay so I'm just going to take that off there now we've taken off the top and the bottom of the box and now we're left with the two sides this side and this side in order to get it even what i do personally is i find a place that i'm going to where i'm going to cut here and how big it is going to be so i'm going to do an average size i'm going to go to the four and a half so i'm at the four and a half so i want my cover to be a four and a half size 
I'm taking this first line right here on the on the on the binding of the book this you know this what's going to be the binding of the book this first corner and I'm going to place it at the four and a half so I'm going to just cut there oh you know I did a three and a half it's okay I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes so we'll do it on the other side at the three and a half <laughs> I don't want a three and a half size. I can't see you guys. I don't want a three and a half size book because the spine is rather fat and the three and a half will be too small. So we'll just continue for demonstration purposes. Now on the other side, I'm going to turn it on the other side and I'm going to do the spine. And we're also going to do, now we did it on this side of the spine that time. So now we're going to do it on this side of the spine and I'm going to go to the three and a half. There we go. And now I have a perfectly sized back cover and front cover with the spine to the book. Just like that. Maybe I will make something out of this. I don't know. A tag book or something? Well, it's going to be kind of... The spine is too thick for the width of the front, but who knows? Maybe we'll make something from it. Okay, then I, I usually go through this to see if there's anything I can have, but I know that there's really nothing... I wouldn't use this. I would just throw it away. I wouldn't continue using it. Okay, so now as far as moving to the next step, I cover this. Personally, I do. You guys could too. And this is how I do that. I take either, I take some, I have some, you know, craft paper. If you have craft paper laying around, you could use that. Brown paper bags, you could use that. Um, wrapping paper, whatever you want, just like, just as if, just as if you were covering, um, a kid's book from school, that's what you want to do. It's the exact same way. So if you've ever had, if you've ever had to cover your books from school or your kid's books at school, that's what you want to do the exact, the exact same way. So I, I'm going to take it. I kind of did that too big. Okay, so while I'm doing this mindlessly, I'm going to go over some more things for thinking outside of the box and what you have in your home. Um, I don't know what your homes look like, but I know what mine looks like. <laughs> and if I wanted something to craft with long ago, um, I would go. And of course, if you have kids or grandkids, um, or neighbors, whatnot. Even ask your family members. Are you guys, you know, going through your things in the spring? Do you have any sheets that are tablecloths that you want to get rid of? Uh, sheets, tablecloths, pillow pillowcases. Um, uh, little children, their clothing. It's the best. <laughs> babies. Anybody has babies, we all know. Any baby clothes that they're going to grow out of and not be able to fit in next year or they've already grown out of it, take them off the hands of someone who's willing to give them to you because sometimes they're just the most darlingest little things. They have polka dots. They have lace. They have pink. They have blue. They have trucks. They have bears. They have... They have so many cute things that you can use in your junk journals and make things with. And believe me, if you watch my channel, I will show you how. Um, also, children's bedding, uh, babies including, children's bedding, sheets from children's bedding, blankets from children's bedding, things that, of course, that are not keepsakes. I'm talking about things that people want to get rid of. Maybe they're stained or they just don't want them anymore. It wasn't their favorite. It wasn't anything special to them or it's your own. Um, you can use that for your, for your um, junk journaling to get yourself some fabric because fabric is fun to use with paper and I use that a lot. Um, I'm trying to go over here. I did tell you guys that you can ask me any questions you want. 
Um, and if, you know, again, if you're coming from any other craft, think of what you have from that craft to bring into this craft. If you like this and you, and you saw this and you were drawn to it, think of what you have in your stash of what you can use. You might be teaching us something different that maybe we don't know. Okay, this is what I do. I take each, each corner and I clip the corner just like that. Not clipping the book corner, clipping the corner um, of the paper diagonal. So I'm going to do that on each corner like that. And I'll do that over here. Okay, now there is a spine here. I need to I need to make it so that, that there's not a lot of bulk here when it folds. So I just do this. I clip a little mini triangle out meeting up to each line of that spine. Just it's just like a triangle pie. That's all. And then I pull it out. That's all I do. I do the same thing over here. A little triangle like this and like this. And I just pull it out. Now, I could just glue that right down the center and glue that on this side. And I don't have the, any bulk where my book is going to crease. All right. Let me look over here in my, in my notes because I did write notes for you guys. Um, I did say to think, think, about, think about looking around the house, old files, cereal boxes, paper bags, any, any gift wrap paper that you don't want anymore that you're not using. What if you bought gift wrap paper for somebody's wedding you bought you gave them the, the gift but it has all that pretty gold on it or something or embossed white things um um embossed like white images or flowers or something you can use that in your collage in your in your junk journals on your pages if you're not using it anymore if it's something that's not being used anymore, don't go in and start tearing apart things <laughs> that you that you really like. And then in six months from now, you're going to need it and you're going to hate me for having, having you go in and rip it up. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I don't want you to do that. If, you're, if it's something that's, you know, collecting space and you're just not using it and you thought of thrifting it or getting rid of it, um... Use it in your junk journals. Find a way. I would if I were you. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, we went through the dyed papers. Oh, um, thrift, thrift shops. If you guys like thrifting, um, I definitely find a lot of my stuff at thrifting. Uh, look at your local area for thrifting. Um, sometimes in the spring, um, there are lots of sales at churches where people clean out and donate stuff. And then... The, and then they have too much stuff and they decide to have like a little sale. Sometimes you can get things for very, very cheap. Um, also, uh, let's see, eBay, 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 and uh, what, what is it? Not eBay, um, not eBay, Etsy, Etsy. Etsy sellers have paper packs like... Um, I do currently in my shop have paper packs where um, you can find things to use for your junk journals there where the person has done all the work for you so you don't have to go in and collect um, you know unless you want to um, collect a whole bunch of stuff all at one time you can usually buy something on etsy that someone else has put together a whole little packet for you to have a little stash of things in your craft room for the time being or even just to get you started and also newspapers um you can use newspapers in your newspapers magazines um you can use that in your collage, in your junk journals, in your pages, in your book pages. We'll go into more book pages tomorrow. I will we'll start doing this. Um, we'll start doing this tomorrow in the as far as the book pages, and we'll put in signatures tomorrow. Um, as far as what papers to use and things like that. I'm gonna check my time here. Hold on one second. We do have a little bit of time. I don't know why it's gone. 
<laughs> Yesterday I thought it was going so fast and today it's going slow. Okay. Um, what else did I know? I wrote down some things here. I'm going to link the video. Um, oh, and curtains. Cur curtains, pillowcases, sheets, clothes, kids' clothes. You guys can use that as far as fabric-wise things in your... If you don't have fabric in your stash. Um, I will be adding some fabric packs to my shop. I'm going to be doing that. Um, as well as continuing this 100-day craft project. I will be doing that. Adding some things to my shop. Okay, so this is how I would cover... I'm wondering, should I just keep going? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I should. Um, this is how I would cover to make a little book. I don't I don't really care for this cover, this spine so much, of course, because that was my fault. I cut it off. I cut it off, but maybe we could use it. Let me see what I have over here to make a little cover. Why not? I'll show you what I do. We have some time left, so I might as well do it. Um, I'm going to pull out some. Now, I had this from yesterday. Uh, this was from yesterday's video. This was something that I was going to do and work on a book. Oh, yeah, you guys can use, if you like doilies, I can't wrap my hand around it very much. But sometimes I like them as a page, a page in the journal. They're cute. Um, I guess we'll use this. I think I had this for another project, but... Let's use it. Maybe we'll make a tag book. We'll just go and use it. Okay, so I had all these things picked out for a project. Do I want to use this on here? Let me just double check because I think I have some other things too. Let me just, let me look. Let me look. I, I usually gather my things in, oh, here. Maybe we'll use that. I usually gather my things in like colors to um, put them on a book. Mm. Okay. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at what I have. I have some greens in here. Some greens and some... Yeah, maybe we'll use this one instead of the pink because I think I had this saved for another project and I have it written down <laughs> I have a project book you guys that I keep um that I was working on things and I I honestly think that was for a different book so I'm gonna do this one and we're just gonna collage on the outside of it and I'll show you how I do that there's some paper and this I I made this I did watercolor here and just drew around it. Here are some fabric pieces that inspired me. And this, I can tell you, was from another project. So, let's just go ahead and start. Um, I think I like that for the spine. I think I'm just going to keep that right there in the spine. Let's see how I would do this. Hold on, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I never know. I never know. I never, I never know. <laughs> I'm not I'm not thinking that I should do the whole thing with big strips like that. How about this here? And of course, I will sew this after because I do sew my items. I do not, um, I'm not having very good luck here. Okay, maybe that's good. And then we can put this on the back. Hmm. Okay, maybe I did have good luck. How about, let's see if we put this down and put this on top. This is how I would do this, you guys. I'm just showing you my process. So if you have some scraps that you want to play with at home, at your home, in your studio, um, with some fabric, um, this is how I would come up with this. I would just, um, this is just like collaging with paper to me, except for I'm using fabric. Same, same concept. I like that. I like the spine on here. I think I'm just going to glue this spine on here. 
and hope that it goes well. So let's do that. I need, and I need a glue book here. And I will use my fabric tac glue and my Prick glue to do this. I will use both glues. So I'm just gonna glue this on. We're gonna see how this is gonna turn out because I don't even know if I can, you know, this was a mistake. <laughs> it was a mistake, you guys, because I cut it too small. But that's okay. Obviously. <laughs> it looks like it's okay. I'm actually going to just push this over to the side so that this is not in the spine. And only this is in the spine. Because this will be covered by fabric. And it will work out better. And I probably will take... Let me see if I can push this up to this top. Yes. So that I could um, cover the bottom. Because I didn't think of that at first. Okay. Maybe I'll cover the bottom with that. Possibly. All right. So let's put this on how I was going to put it on. And I'm thinking that I like that. I also like it that way but I do like it that way as well and I like in this rough edge here oh yeah I like that a lot I like the rough edge on this side so I'm just going to cut it right there and you I, another thing I would suggest to in, invest in, no, it's too late now, I already cut it. Another thing I would always suggest to invest in is a good pair of fabric scissors and a good pair of paper scissors. I like the Tim Holtz scissors. I have these short ones and I also have these tall ones. I like them both. I go, they're my go-to scissors. They are, I like, I like using them. This is a piece of burlap. And I don't know. Let me let me see. How about if we change the whole thing up and I put some gold on the back? It's very Christmassy. <laughs> I think that I could use this on the front and the back. Let me check. I'm pretty sure that I can. Right here. Yeah, I could. Let's do that. I'm going to use this on the front, this piece. I am. I am. Okay. Sorry for being quiet. <laughs> so we can, you can collage your, I need to, I need to cut it. It's not, it's not a rippable fabric. It's very heavy linen. Some fabrics are rippable and some are not. Okay, so I'm going to put that there like that. I like that. And I like that edging on the side there. I like both things. So I'm going to um, just cut this here so that I can glue it on. And I'll be more precise in my cut afterwards. And I am going to sew it. Um, now, if you have a sewing machine, yes, it does sew through the cardboard you just have to go slow it's all all machines are different just um start with a scrap piece of something if you're new to sewing also if you're new to sewing and you have a sewing machine and you want to sew on paper make sure that your um make sure that your your thread is not at the smallest spacing you want it at the biggest, largest spacing because otherwise, um, if you don't have any fabric, you'll rip it. If you're just sewing on paper, if you have fabric, you can use the regular, the regular sew, you know, the regular stitch, stitch uh, length. You can use whatever you want. Then it's no bother. But. If you just have paper, make sure that your stitch length is longer. Otherwise, it will rip your paper 
just like you would if it was perforated. If it was like a per perforated check, it'll rip right off, right apart. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this here like that, and I will cut the excess off. And I'm gonna take this and sew that line down. There we go. There, we have our front. And I like the gold, but I'm not gonna go with it, right? We chose this one. So I'm not thinking that I'm gonna, oh, yes, is it long enough? It's not quite long enough, but we can put this under. We'll put this color on, on top, actually. I'll put it on top. Let's see. Oh, my stomach is growling, you guys. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, I'll just put that right on the top there. Um, I'm trying to piece this together, or maybe I'll do this planer. Let's save this for over here. Hold on, we'll get this. I'm dealing with scraps, you guys. This was, this was not, I didn't have anything out in front of me, so we're gonna have to go with the flow. We are. I don't think I want this on there, and I definitely don't, there's, I don't, this was for something else. Oh wait, we had this. Hold on. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay. Let me just see where I'm going to put this. Put that there like that. Yes. So I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to I'm going to go with the spine here. I'm not going to overlap at the spine. I'm just going to go at the at the seam. And I will put this down first. and have it meet there. And then I'll just sew that after. Okay, so we're doing a cover. And I'm just gonna have it meet, meet everywhere. And then I'll cut off the excess. Again, I'm avoiding this spine because of the fact I don't want it to wear and tear when it, um, when it, uh, when it bends. <laughs> um, that's one thing about me, and I do apologize. When I'm doing a video, it's very, sometimes it's very hard for me to remember words, especially when they're easy words and they're right on the tip of my tongue. And usually in everyday life, <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> in everyday life, it's the same as well. Okay, there we go. And then I like this on the bottom here. I like that little piece right there. I think I'm gonna go with it. Just like that. And then you can make a focal point too. Um, let's put this under. I'm going to lift this up, but only because I'm going to sew it. It's not bothering me if I lift it up. It's not all the way dry yet either. I will lift this up here. There. Perfect. Oh, yeah. If you're new to crafting also with the glues, you need a steel a steel pin, a steel, a steel type of a pin to put in the top of your glue bottle. Otherwise, it will rust. This, the pin will rust and you'll get that rusting in your glue and that's not what you want. That's another tip if you're new. If you're visiting me or don't know, you know, and you guys can do search too. There's lots and lots of people who teach uh, their spin on things. I mean, I'm doing this from the beginning. So this is a junk journaling, junk journaling paper craft 101. That's my take on things. 
And today I taught you how to, how I would make a journal cover. Now the inside I will decorate also. However, I could do many things to the inside. Okay, so this is my cover. And I don't like the way this looks. Let me just trim it closer. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little picky. You'll learn that. There we go. Okay, so that's my cover. That's my spine. And that's my back. And I'm going to sew it. But I need to do the inside for Oh, the inside. I also need to do the inside. I won't do the inside first. I will sew it first. Sew all around it. Pick out my focal point, and then after I sew it, then I will do the inside to cover my sewing. Okay, so decorate, sew if you're going to, and then do the inside. The inside, I would not personally let me see how much time we have. Well, we do have a few minutes left, but I also have my beginning that I didn't count in. So I, I'm thinking that we're pretty much to the time. Um, the inside, I would cover it with scrapbooking paper, with digitals, with, with wrapping paper, you know, with any kind of paper. Any kind of paper you can cover the inside with. But we'll work more on this tomorrow, and maybe I'll think of something to do with it. Um, we're going to continue with learning. So I do apologize to you um, if you already know these things and you're new and you are a longtime follower of me, but maybe you'll learn something new or maybe you just like to come hang out with me. And I love hanging out with you too. <laughs> um, I hope that I've inspired you to start the, crabby, the, the craft, the hobby of paper crafting. And I hope that I've inspired you to maybe even take a look at what you have around your house to get yourself going to maybe, maybe you have some things around the house that you didn't think about that you've been um, wanting to work with for a while. Um, example, uh, you know, file folders or junk mail or boxes or uh, old linens that you just haven't used. I mean, don't go cutting up the family linens now. Don't do that on my account. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so very much for joining me. And welcome to my very first time, my very first day of doing the 100 Day Craft Project. I will see you guys back here again tomorrow. And thank you so much. Blessings to you all. Bye, my crafting buddies. I'll see you guys soon.